This video is going to be for those who want to present a clean score from their works. This is medium sized orchestra, it's not too big. And this is in Cubase 9.53. You don't need to use the notation program. This is a wonderful program that works very well. There are a few things that are probably helpful before you get started, and that is to make sure that all your parts that you've orchestrated are clean, the segments are clean. You may have some strays here and there, but that's okay. Uh, and that if you do use a sketch, like I use a piano sketch from the beginning, that all of those parts have been utilized and don't have any missing parts. The next thing is to make sure there are no muted parts because muted parts do show up. So let's say I were to mute this and then draw the score for it, the part would still show up. The reason for this is if you double parts, let's say you have a clarinet one, clarinet two, and it's the same line, and it just becomes uh, overwhelming, the uh, sound produced, then they give you the option of muting, but still appearing in the score. I don't think we're gonna have a problem with that. Now the next thing I do is make sure that your grid type is set to bar up here, and then we're gonna get the pencil, and we're gonna pencil in ends to all the parts, and in the back as well, and we do this for continuity, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. And in so doing, we can now go to the beginning again, and we'll get our glue stick, and with the option key pressed, we'll go through and we will connect all of these parts. So that is one continuous line on each instrument. And the reason why we do this is so that when you select for the score, all the parts show up. See, they're all selected, they will all show up. If you do not have all the parts selected for your initial score, some will not show up. The ones that aren't, aren't selected will not show. The next thing we need to do is, I need to move these voices down here, and it's very important that you get this set up exactly the way it needs to be in the score. And do that first because you can change things, but if you attach brackets, it won't change correctly. I just want to make sure that we don't have any empty parts, and it looks like the snare part, there's nothing. So we're gonna get rid of that. It's unnecessary, remove the track, that's okay. So I think everything else has at least one note on it. So now that we have clean lines here associated with our hopeful score, select all, and then in score, command R or you can just hit Command R. And here is Cubase's version of score editing, notation editing. Now, the advantage to using a MIDI editor, which is this, is that it's much easier to get your music into the machine, so to speak, using a keyboard. Uh, you may not be a good keyboard player, I'm very poor at it, but it's a lot easier to get your information in through the keyboard than it would be through notation because that's very tedious. And that's the beauty of Cubase, because primarily when I started using it in 95, it was uh, a MIDI editing program for external instruments. And I think that year, the 96 was the first year they introduced VST. Cubase is an extraordinary program. It can do a lot of really terrific things, but it's as though the notation program itself was wedged into the uh, audio MIDI program, which is fine. But there are some aspects of notation that cannot access MIDI editor and vice versa. Because of that, this dialog box is very important. This notation arena here is not something that you want to spend your time in at the moment. We're going to go straight to page mode. And now we have all the parts jammed in 8.5 by 11 paper, which, as you can see, it doesn't fit. And there's things we have to do to make it fit. I want to talk about this dialog box here, the score settings. This is a very powerful instructional medium for the program. Virtually everything you need to do with parts and scores is going to be in the score settings dialog box. The first thing we want to do is, let's go to main layout. We want all our parts to fit. Without wasting time, let's do this. Let's hit 50%. 50 do multi rests, one, because we want to group all empty rests. We don't want them to appear. Staff separators and hit apply. It appears that it's not quite fitting. 
So now we're going to go to our auto layout function, which is really the strength of the program. Uh, optimize all. And this is not quite default, but five measures is good. And we'll hit that. And it should line things up pretty nicely. And yes, it does. Yeah, all the pages are, I think everything is on the page. And that's great. Let's go to the beginning of the piece, which is your opening page. I'm going to get rid of these extra measures right now uh, by going to, uh, well, here we are in the main editor. I'm going to select the scissors. I'm just going to cut this, cut that, and then we're going to, I'm going to delete these. Uh, and let's go to the back because I think it's the same as well. Put the marker there, but we'll get rid of it. Mark it, scissors, cut, and then we can delete. And then we'll go back. And if we select score, I'm hoping that that measure's gone. And it is. So those measures that we attached to get the continuity of each line, we've been able to get rid of. Now we're in the opening, uh, the initial page of the work. We're going to name this score. Now, the way Cubase works with this score settings can be confusing at first. When you select all the parts, as in this score, it will not give you a score. It will not say this is the score. Uh, it will select layout according to the top part that you've selected will be the layout. So what we can do is we're going to change the name and hit apply. Make sure you hit apply right away because nothing takes until you hit that. And now we have our score. We can always click on that. So we have, we can click on these other layouts because uh, it looks like I've opened other lines. And whenever you open up a line, uh, a part, let's say, it will create a layout. And it will remember all of these things that you've done. But to clean up the initial page here, just to make it presentable, these names at the top of the staff, it's not really done that way. It should be, you hit go to project and click on um, staff names left of project. And then click, it'll put them on the left side. You'll have to auto layout, optimize all, and then it should give you good spacings on this side. Okay, good. It did pretty well. It's shaping up. It looks much neater. Now, let's add brackets because we bracket the winds, we'll bracket the brass, and this is a really presentable way of doing things. It's also in layouts, and it's right here, and you wouldn't know it unless you read the manual. <laughs> and even if you read the manual, you'd probably forget. But these two little lines here, this is your bracketing for the score. Very important. Most all scores have it. And usually what we do is we'll bracket the winds, we'll bracket the brass so that conductors don't get lost. And then we'll do this, and then we'll do percussion, and then we'll do that. So those sections are brass. And now we'll emphasize certain sections, like the horns. we got four there. we got two of the violin. We're going to connect those, and then we'll connect the singers. So you, at a glance, you can get to it rather quickly. And then hit apply. Always remember to hit apply immediately after. We have our winds. Noticing this, I can see that the oboe has two lines. It has a bass clef. Clearly don't need that. So this is where we go into our score settings. We'll go to staff. We'll select oboe. And as a side note, I need to tell you that I'm working with a template. This will not occur in Cubase automatically. I've designed a template to work with, so I incorporate it into my sketch. And it has all the orchestra parts and the, most of their settings. And so that this um, quantize display has been previously set in syncopation, clean lengths, no overlap. That's also been set. So that would be probably another video. Typically, it's, it's these, none of these are clicked. Yes. As far as polyphony goes, right, more parts on uh, one line. This is something that needs to be fixed. Like, for example, the clarinet has two parts and the oboe has two parts. But you can see that I have two lines here. So that's a problem. I want to fix it. We're going to go to polyphonic and I'm going to get rid of that. Watch, that line will disappear. It's gone. This is very important when you have more than one part on a line. This is the only way you can separate those parts because it'll be typically be single and those will not be separatable but polyphonic you can select how how much polyphony you want in one line you can also select the clef 
So let's say you have horns in treble clef, one horn, first horn in treble clef, and you can have second horn in bass clef if you want. It will create a separate staff in bass clef, but it'll be combined as one part. It works really quite well. But for, you know, typical simple or paired winds, you're going to need two. This is the only way you'll be able to separate it. So we have that. The initial page, let's do a couple more things to it. And what we'll do is we'll go over here to form symbols. I want to put a metronome marking. So we're going to grab it and drop it right there so we know it's 80. Now, it's showing up on every line, which is rather amateur. We don't want to see that on our score. And this is how you fix that. You go to layout. This L here refers to layout page. And when you do a layout page or a form symbol, which is really the core of the uh, score. To edit that, we go to this section here, which in the score settings is layout. We're going to click off the layout sign for all the parts except the top. And then we'll hit apply, and there it is. All right, so we have our metronome marking. So we'll go over here to page text, which where is where we were. And we're going to say this is um, Isaiah 9. I want it to be on all pages, top center. I want it to be 36. And I want this mistral. And there it is. The other thing you can do on the title page, which is important, is page numbers. So we go down here, click on it, and then you're going to put percent, percent P little p, not big P, bottom right. And we're going to use um, note 14 is good, and there it is. So now you have the first page, which is looking okay. I'm not going to talk about slur markings and all these other dots and notations that you're going to have to do. I would recommend getting key commands, uh, and that helps a lot. You can select slurs, groupings of slurs, as long as they're not next to each other, you can group them together in multiple like that select these and as long as there are notes between them they won't slur everything together and then I'll hit my slur button and they slurs it together just know that there's a lot of work when it comes to editing right the, the things I want to show you now are have regard to here and we got messy stuff here and we got to clean this up. Now, what are these things? Well, these low notes here are modifiers, right? They're, they're um, modifier keys from your instrument. This helps you to change the articulation values or, tr or slurs or, or length of notes or legatos or what have you by using a modifier key in your MIDI program as related to those sound samples. So this... Right here, this violin part, um, oh, let's just show you what's going on there, and then you'll be able to see. Because you can see the modifier key right here, and that it's right there. See how the length of that? And it's very low. It's way down here. And this is related to your instrument, right? Your instrument has these modifications with the modifier keys and F0, but they're way low. They're way down there. Uh, they do help with the sound, and you'll watch it as it, it changes right here to spiccato. Right? So th the problem is that they show up in your score, and we need to get rid of that. And all of this other, you know, these other markings that really don't belong, that you do that in the score settings, staff, options. You can see down here, note limits, and it will show the notes or not show them based on these note limits. No instrument plays E0, so it usually doesn't interfere. But here we'll do E0, and we'll hit apply, and it disappears. So now I have to do that for all of these, right? Hit E0 to get rid of those erroneous markings of these low notes, which interfere. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is splitting the part. This is a good place to show that. In the clarinets, you can see it's two parts on one line. And as I said earlier, and we go to polyphonic, we have a polyphonic. If this is set to single, you'll never be able to separate those notes. What you have to do, this has to be clicked on. 
polyphonic. You got two clarinets. And the first part dominates. So on every line, it's voice one for every line. Now you have to fix that. You select your voice two, and it's option click, voice two. And now you have, you have your two parts. Normally it just flips it. For example, in the flutes, see now I got single there. If I wanted to separate these parts, there's no way to do that they're together. I don't think the score it matters that much, but eventually when you do separate parts and you want to create parts from the score, you need to separate these. It's a lot of work. And like I said earlier, the MIDI editor is not connected to the score editor in this regard. And that's kind of frustrating because if I could have selected the second parts in the MIDI editor earlier and designated them, that would be great but it's not connected. So you have to do this separately in the score. And yes, it's laborious. The only way you can do it is if it's selected to polyphonic. And we don't have four parts. We'll get rid of those. We get two flutes. We click on that. And now we can select this the second flute part, uh, which is, and then we can go here, move to voice, move to voice two. Now, I have already done key commands for this. So I just, I think it's control option two. So I can do one, two, three, four, you know, whatever I have selected uh, in the dialog box. Key commands are very handy and it's, you can design your own. And so that's what I've done here by going to key commands. Let's pop it over here. Now, the beautiful thing is that Cubase remembers your, the last thing you did. So there you are. Move to voice two. You can change the key or this is the key command that I'm using. And it works beautifully. So even for slurs or for, you know, certain aspects. What's really important in the score, and I forgot to do this in the lead page. Let's go back. They know that the clarinet is in B flat. You can't just assume. It's a good idea to put B flat, B flat clarinet. Let's see. B flat C L for short. And then hit apply. Make sure that the appearance of the key is related to the key of the piece uh, with regards to B-flat clarinet, and it is, and it does it. So, for example, the horns, I need to let them know that it's horn in F. Now, if I put F in front of horn, it's going to just seem like it's French horn, but horn in F, this should help. You're going to have to do this with all the transposing instruments. And then confirm. It's seven semitones, and it will select it for you. So clarinet and A, and uh, the French horn, it'll select it for you, because it's typically horn is an F. And they need to know this. Now, I've talked about percussion. That's in another video. See, the program's beautiful in that it'll clean up so much for you in the score by just doing it automatically as far as putting in your own markings and dynamic markings which there are none and I will have to fix parts so when this prints it's usually a little small when I did the layout I did 50% and you need to do that initially because the program struggles with reduction but it doesn't struggle as much with enlarging things. If you want it to appear, the notes a little fatter on the page, after you have initially reduced everything, you can increase the size to 57, maybe even 60%. It'll keep your notes where they are. It won't move things around. You can see things as a little more clarity there. The notes are a little bigger. And usually they are in a score situation. It works very well, increasing the size. Uh, one final aspect to the score that I wanted to include are rehearsal markers. And this is best done in the main editor. What you do is you add a marker track. Marker track. And you grab your pencil and you can put rehearsal marks. You put rehearsal marks, you know, wherever you feel you need to. Or you can just look at it. Sometimes it will be pretty evident. I'll put one there. And we'll put one here at the end. Then we have those marks. We go back to our score page. Underscore. Advanced layout. Marker track to form. 
This will put the rehearsal marks in the score. It will also include double bar. I think this gives you a pretty good overview on how to initially start your score. All right, good luck with that. <laughs>